Every day, the Trevor Project saves lives. I took a call recently as a helpline counselor that significantly has changed my life. This particular call came from an individual who uh, was at their wit's end and they had a gun. Um, it basically started off with uh, this young person who was 16 and he told me that he had a girlfriend and that for years he's been basically hiding the fact that he knew he was gay. And he had just told his girlfriend that he was gay and the girlfriend immediately started telling him that he was a fag and that he was disgusting and that she was going to tell every single person in his high school that he was gay. And he then said he did everything he could. He was frightened and he went on to tell his parents because he figured, I have to tell them. And as the story progressed, he started getting more choked up on the phone with me. And he told me that his parents basically said to him, this is the last night you're able to stay at home. A lot of times, uh, a boy or a girl will call the Trevor helpline and we will be the very first person they ever tell that they're gay or lesbian. There was nobody I could talk to uh, growing up in a small town in South Texas and we get calls from kids in you know, small towns all over the country uh, and they don't have, that's the first thing you know is, you know, is can I talk to you? Uh, it's one of the first things they ask is, you know, is it okay? And it's like, sure, you can talk to us anytime, 24 hours a day. There was a kid that had been living on the streets, was turning tricks to make money. His parents had kicked him out when they found out he was gay. Um, was taking crystal meth, and I was just shocked at how, how much was upside down in his life. Uh, what was most upsetting for him is that it, he had been at school uh, and had been the only kid in school who was out and had been subject to a lot of not just teasing but physical abuse, kids shoving him into lockers. I mean, he really couldn't go from one classroom to the next without um, being hurt. At 16 years old, this young man called the Trevor helpline with nowhere to turn, no one to talk to. His mom that adopted him, that he said really never wanted me. The only persons that ever cared about him were his grandparents who died two years ago and the boyfriend that he had just recently lost. He had no money, he had nowhere to go, and he felt isolated and hopeless and he actually talked about taking his life. He told me, why should I, what, what is there for me to live? Her parents gave her money and said, don't ever come back. So she couldn't go home. That's the first thing she said is, I have no place to go. What am I going to, you know? And her, and, and I, so, I mean, that's what parents do. You know, they tell their children, don't come back, ever. You would think that people today would have families that wouldn't do this to them and would be supportive and be understanding. And... There are a lot of families that are, but there's still so many families that aren't, and that's why we do the work that we do here. Just knowing that um, you provide a, a safe place where youth can come and talk in complete confidence, and you provide a place where you will listen to them without judging them, is, um, is incredibly important. A few months ago, um, Peter called. Um, from, he was sitting in his car in his family's driveway, Inside the house, he had put pills and a knife under the bed, and he was contemplating suicide that night. But he'd sat in the car because he knew, you know, he needed to talk to someone. Peter had a history of suicide attempts and hospitalizations, but he had contracted with his new therapist to contact the Trevor Helpline um, the next time he felt suicidal. I did everything I could to keep this individual safe. And he started to cry. And I, we always have co-counselors in the room with us. And I gave a piece of paper to my co-counselor that said, rescue, meaning that we need to get 911 or emergency services to this kid. And he began to scream and cry. And as much as I tried to talk him down, he said he had the gun, he was putting it to his head, and he was pulling the trigger, and he hung up the phone. She had razor blades and was thinking about killing herself, but didn't really want to follow it through. We called him back. I got him on the phone. I do believe that, you know, just having someone to talk to is really, really important to people who at that moment of desperation or depression or having really nowhere else to go, um, to have a voice on the other end is, is just critical. 
he also said to me, thank you. Thank you for listening to me and for helping me realize that I do have options and helping me realize that the only thing I wanted was the pain to go away and not my life. And through the call, he actually voluntarily um, took the razor blade and threw it out the window, which was very comforting to me. Through that conversation, I successfully de-escalated the crisis to where Peter verbally expressed hope for the future. And he acknowledged the helpline as a lifeline. We are here because Trevor really saves lives.